Welcome back. Here I'm continuing to talk about generalized linear models, but I want to now focus specifically about how we fit generalized linear models in R. And again, I'm going to start with our, our the first kind of base case here we're going to consider is a logistic regression, but the way that we fit a, a logistic re, uh, regression uses this more general idea of fitting GLMs. So I want to focus on the latter set part of this chunk of code here, because this is really the meat of it here, what I've highlighted. First thing to note, we, when we switch from a, a GL, from a linear model, which we fit using LM, to a generalized linear model, we now fit it using GLM. Uh, it's also worth noting that since uh, normal models are a special case of generalized linear models, you can fit any linear model with GLM as well. And so the equation syntax is exactly the same, you know, y tilde x, and everything we covered in the last few lectures applies here. You can write a generalized linear model that has a polynomial. You can write a generalized linear that has an interaction term. You can write a multiple regression version of generalized linear models that has multiple predictor variables. You, everything you do to write, represent an equation, we can do to represent an equation in generalized linear models. Uh, the big difference between generalized linear models and linear models is this family argument, which kind of has to be there if you're fitting anything other than a Gaussian. Uh, family model has two parts. Uh, first is it tells you what the probability distribution is that you are using. And the second, within that probability distribution, it tells you which link function you're using. And at the end of the videos, I'll, I'll dive into the help for GLM to kind of go over uh, in a little bit more detail what the options are there. In this case, because we're fitting logistic regression, there's not a logistic regression function in R, but there's a GLM function where you say uh, what a logistic regression is, is the use of a binomial error model with this logit link. Okay, so that gives us back a regression object. If we look at the summary, I'm going to jump down and look at the summary for that and see that um, what we get back. So first, like with the LM, it gives us uh, what the call was, so what we actually passed in as a reminder. Uh, second, it reports residuals, but it does not report residuals as the difference uh, between the model and the data. Uh, directly, it reports them in terms of, of deviance instead of uh, absolute residual. So, you know, in the normal sense, we, we calculate the difference between the model and the data. In the deviance sense, we're calculating uh, a deviance score uh, relative to uh, you know, a theoretical best fit model, kind of fitting each data point at its own one at a time. But what the key idea here is, is to know what deviance is. Uh, so deviance is uh, derived from the concept of likelihood. And so if we write down our likelihood, which remember is our probability of the data given some choice of model and its parameters. Uh, so if we have our best fit model and say, what's the probability with our best fit model of producing any particular observation, um, we can calculate that likelihood. Uh, to go from likelihood to deviance, we take the log of that likelihood and multiply it by two. Um, and so here we, these deviance residuals, you know, in some sense are, you know, they, they've been somewhat standardized to kind of, you would interpret them similar to uh, other residuals in the sense that they have a min and a max and then a quartile range and a median. Um, for our coefficients, again, we're going to have our, a column for our variables, and here we have our intercept and our x, our best parameter estimate, our standard error of our best parameter estimate, a z-score, and a p-value for that z-score. Uh, it should be noted that we don't are using a z-statistic here instead of a t-statistic because we don't have um, a residual uh, error term here. Um, and then we have uh, some overall estimates of uh, so, so analogous to an ANOVA table, uh, our null de deviance and residual deviance. And then instead of getting an, uh, 
you know, R squared and stuff like that, root mean squared error, we don't have that because we're not using normal residuals. Instead, we have an AIC score. So that AIC score, as we've talked about it in our model selection lecture, allows us a way of comparing models. And so you might fit uh, a GLM that just has an intercept and doesn't have uh, any covariates at all. So, you know, Y tilde one, uh, and then you could fit with an X, or you could fit with multiple Xs, and you can compare different models. Okay, so we get back that uh, now GLM object, and from that we can do things similar to what we've done before. So one thing we can do is we can uh, make predictions. So we're going to pass that LM object in. We need to make a new sequence of Xs like we've done in the past. So here it just goes from yeah, minus 5 to 10. And then we make predictions. Now, we once we make the predictions, we need to transform them. Uh, you know, the predictions are made in a logit scale, so we need to, to inverse lo, inverse logit that to get back to a linear scale. And then we're just drawing uh, those lines. So in here, the golden line, golden yellow line was what we used to simulate the data from. The red line is the uh, the, the maximum likelihood best fit line. Uh, thing to note here. Uh, that GLM predict option did not come by default with a, a confidence and predictive interval estimate. Uh, we will cover how to generate uh, confidence and predictive intervals more generally uh, for any model uh, in a couple weeks after we've finished up uh, this unit and then talk a bit more about likelihood and then we can talk about how we estimate uncertainties. Uh, in models more, more broadly. And so we'll be seeing that in the coming weeks. Cool. I'm going to wrap this up and we'll move on to some more GLM examples after this.